Ryan Tannehill is officially a better form tackler than half of the defensive backs in the league. The whole reason Mike Vrabel wanted him was because he was the only free agent quarterback who could hit harder than Keith Bullock. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. The officials are still terrible, but that's okay because now they're screwing the Patriots too. Perna. New England was robbed of a touchdown late in a loss, but the Chiefs were robbed of their equi equipment and almost had to forfeit. I've got the Sunday afternoon games to recap here and a sweet, delicious, tasty Patriots loss for the second week in a row to Baskin. New England has lost three times this season and each time my Broncos have won. That review will be up uh, Monday evening. So today, the Titans, they are scary. Could end up at the top of the AFC South. Phillip Rivers gets lucky on his birthday. And did I mention that the Patriots lost at home? That's good. Sports. Double! Go! Let's go, buddy. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you do that, you will get football videos in your YouTube feed and you will like it. Today's episode though is sponsored by Audible. Audible is my favorite place to listen to audiobooks. Think about giving someone you love, no, 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 better yet, give yourself the gift of an Audible membership. Now is the best time to do it with a special offer of 53% off your first three months. Personally, I devour audiobooks, and if I'm honest, I have an addiction to mysteries and thrillers. I recently listened to The Ruin in Bearskin while pretending to work out, and my favorite listen this last year was Before the Fall. When you download an audiobook through Audible, the books are yours. You own them forever. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month. That's more than half off their regular price. You can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash that's good sports or text that's good sports to 500-500. Again, audible.com slash that's good sports for their best deal yet. Do it. The Chargers pummel the Jaguars 45 to 10. One of the few things that can stymie Minshew mania is Eckler ecstasy. It's little, fast acting, and had over 100 rushing yards and 100 receiving yards in this game. Allen Robinson, of course, scored a simultaneous touchdown on Thursday Night Football, and the Chargers matched that with an even more simultaneous catch by Mike Williams and Trey Herndon. In baseball, tie goes to the runner, and the same applies in football, which is confusing because everyone is fucking running in football, including the fat sinners. Philip Rivers on his 38th birthday scored 38 points in three quarters. Rivers threw for 314 yards and three touchdowns and after the game he said he couldn't help but feel like he came up a little short. He said, I always imagined by the time I turned 38, I would be bearing my 38th child. I'm not even a third of the way there yet. Just like we can't even fill a third of our stands with Charger fans. Tyrod Taylor started the fourth quarter so Rivers could go put another baby in his wife before time expired. I still don't think the Chargers are very good, but now I think Jacksonville is just a lot worse. The Steelers beat the Cardinals 23 to 17. No other fan base has a disregard for condoms like Steelers fans. There's no other way to explain why there are so many Steelers fans everywhere. How do they fill up every stadium? I don't get it. Now, the Steelers may have won this game, but the Cardinals are a far superior fake punt team. They converted their fake punt, and I don't know what the hell the Steelers were doing here. <laughs> In a game where there was nothing special about either team, the Steelers' biggest play was a special team's touchdown. Huge game for Deontay Johnson, aka JuiceUp underscore three on Twitter. And no, that's not an homage to OJ Simpson. It's an homage to the classic Jose Canseco 2005 book, Juiced by Jose Canseco. He is a fan of literature, not murderers. Possibly a fan of PEDs, but definitely not murderers. Kyler Murray threw three interceptions in the first game where he really looked like a rookie. 
but running back David Johnson scored a touchdown for the first time since October. Duck Hodges, behind Mike Tomlin's greatest coaching performance, got the win with the safe one touchdown, zero pick outing. If Mike Tomlin wasn't already a head coach, he'd be the hottest head coaching candidate in the league right now. And the Tennessee Titans worked the Oakland Raiders 42 to 21. Raiders running back Josh Jacobs has been playing with a broken shoulder since October. Team owner Mark Davis said he can't speak highly enough of Jacobs' toughness. He went on to say, but I've been playing with a broken haircut my entire life. Upon hearing that, Marcus Mariota said, uh, yeah, I was playing with whatever Josh Jacobs had too. Jacobs did not play in this game, which makes me ask, at what point was his shoulder broken enough where they weren't gonna risk him playing anymore? Are the Raiders teaming up with the Washington doctors to, to discuss how you handle broken, broken bones? I don't know, the Titans, in addition to having that fine tackling quarterback, are on a four game win streak with 31 points being their lowest scoring game on that run. AJ Brown had 153 receiving yards and two tugs, and Derrick Henry now has more rushing touchdowns than Christian McCaffrey and only trails Nick Chubb in yards. The only thing more strange than seeing the Titans with a high powered offense is the NFL not drug testing Kahir Blazin game after every single quarter. I don't care if that's not how you say it, okay? Blazing game better be the number one jersey sale for Christmas in Tennessee. Hey. Look at my boy, come here. God, it's good to see the boy, huh? Hey. Look at your beautiful face. Look at your beautiful face. Look at Yes, and then it happened. The Kansas City Chiefs beat the New England Patriots. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. I'm spoiled. And I, I still hate the Patriots' animal nicknames. Julian Edelman is the squirrel. Tom Brady gets called the goat. And Rob Gronkowski is the bee. Because you don't realize how much things are going to fall apart without him. The Chiefs' equipment was sent to Newark, New Jersey after it wasn't unloaded from their team plane. In case you're stupid, the Patriots play in Boston, not in New Jersey which would have been a big problem if the equipment didn't arrive on time because the Chiefs would have had to forfeit. And with the Patriots cheating more than a rich, tall, good-looking man who travels a lot for work, the internet was fast with the Bill Belichick jokes. Now Patrick Mahomes, he looks a little bit off. He's still good, but it's almost like a dislocated knee is actually a big deal for a quarterback. I mean, it looked like he needed to have his hand x-rayed after the game which he did, and like my show being presented to an executive at ESPN, the results were negative. He did become the first QB I've ever seen get penalized for a face mask mid-throw. In the NFL, QBs are not allowed to protect themselves. That's the official's job, unless of course it's Cam Newton. I have no idea how the official saw that face mask because he should have been looking to make sure Patrick Mahomes was outside of the pocket so he wasn't flagged for intentional grounding. But that was probably the only play the refs got right in this game. The Patriots' first touchdown drive was aided by two pass interference penalties on third downs uh, by the Chiefs. So it's fair to say that that touchdown didn't even really count for the Patriots. That was Brady's only touchdown pass, and he needed a flea flicker to do it. Some trickery just to score a touchdown. Well, also because his other touchdown pass was taken away by the refs. Belichick had to use all of his challenges in this game due to the deplorable refing, which was key because early in the fourth, Nikhil Harry scored a touchdown, but was ruled out of bounds by the refs. And since it was not ruled a score, it was not automatically reviewed, which means for the first time in 20 years, the Patriots were screwed by the refs in a way they could not overcome. And the Kansas City defense actually held them to a field goal from just a few yards out. The game got chippy and Sammy Watkins and Stephon Gilmore did some sideline humping. And the great Tom Brady was sacked multiple times through an intercept. Did I already say he threw an interception? If I didn't, he threw an interception in this game and he was sacked multiple times. And this game ended on a fourth down pass to Julian Edelman, the squirrel who couldn't squeeze that nut to get the win. This was the first Patriots loss at home since Robert Kraft figured out how to turn secret referee bonuses into tax write-offs. Kansas City really did beat the Pats at their own game, getting all of the calls, scoring on trick plays, and blocking field goals. The best part of this game, 
was that the officials were too stupid to realize Nikhil Harry was in bounds, but smart enough to see Jacoby Myers didn't make this catch in the end zone. I mean, he's developing a habit of not making catches. But they did their job poorly in all the wrong places for New England and correctly in most of the places for the Chiefs. Kind of an exaggeration because Kelsey was flagged twice for phantom calls. All right, I'm, I'm in a weird spot here, Patriots fans, because the rest of us football lovers have seen the officials as the enemy forever. You are about to see them in the same light and not as your third best asset after Belichick and Brady. The last time the officials cost you a game was in 2013 when Brady lost his shit after the refs picked up a flag on the final play against the Panthers negating a pass interference call on Monday Night Football. The Broncos have had three wins ripped from them this season because of bad calls or no calls. You guys do not get to complain about the officials until your team actually misses the goddamn playoffs. Once you truly become a real fan again, like the rest of us loathing in our misery because the refs fucked us, or our quarterback threw more picks than first downs and fucked us, or our special teams double doinked and fucked us, you cannot. As supporters of the best franchise in sports history, most aided in favorable calls in addition to being great, complain about a damn thing the refs do, you just can't. You have had it all and you cannot join us in hating the officials until you really do suck. And I'm being generous, saying once you do not make the playoffs, you can complain. You should be banned from voicing your opinion for as long as your reign of terror has tormented the rest of us. Or once you come to your senses and see the light and agree that roughing calls like this one that you received in the playoffs last year are complete BS. Bull honky bullshit. But please, Pats fans, keep booing Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and the team that has given you more than any other team because they lost a home game for the first time since Philip Rivers wasn't a father. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube and stay tuned for the Drew Lock era beginnings in Denver, Colorado, as the Broncos did beat the Texans pretty good. Oh boy, I can't wait to get into that video. Please, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna if you wanna follow me there. If you don't, then don't do it, but if you want to, that's where you do it.